Thank you for joining this quick how-to screencast brought to you by Salesforce Support. To see more content like this, hit subscribe. All right, let's talk about how you can add your own column for row count to a report. So to do that, let's just create a report. So here I'm going to create an opportunity report. You could have done this with any report type. And I'm just going to clear out all the standard columns that came with this report just to simplify things. And let's just add a few columns back, like let's say the opportunity name and dollar amount. Really doesn't matter what you'd pick here. But we do need a grouping. So I'm going to group by, let's say, opportunity owner. Again, you could have done any grouping. And just so that my report actually has some values in it, I'm going to open up the filters here to get all kinds of opportunities uh, from all time. All right, so now I've got my report. You can see Barry has one, uh, Cindy has two, Iman has one. So that's, that's the record count for each grouping. How do we turn that into its own column? Well, one way is to add a summary formula. These are essentially little formulas that you can create that will run at different summary levels in the report. So this is a good way to compare one grouping to another grouping, but a really simple formula is to just say, what's the row count within this grouping? So here we go ahead and just put in row count, hit apply. And we now have a new column called really whatever we want to call it. And there we go. You can see how many items are in each grouping and it is its own column. But notice what happens here. If I hide the detail rows, then you see the new column we just created, but there's also just a standard row count column, a record count column. Uh, so whenever you have a regular report and you hide the details, the row count becomes a column. But if you want to have row count be its own column when you're viewing all the details, that's when you need one of these summary formulas or a row level formula. Now this formula will actually calculate for each and every record. So you could have a different number, for example, for new deals versus existing deals, or you could calculate 80% of the dollar amount or whatever. This is essentially a formula per record. Uh, but in this case, you could just make each record equal one. <laughs> and so the formula is just one for every record. And we can just add up this one for every record. And that essentially acts as a different row count. So notice the big difference here is this formula is being calculated on each and every record. So there's a one next to every row. Meanwhile, the other one is a summary formula. So it's only really calculated at those grouping levels. Either way, though, when you hide the details, all of them are going to act the same way. It just comes down to uh, what experience you want when you're looking at the report with the detail rows on. All right, so here is my report. I've got row count in a couple different ways, and I can just save it and run it. And we now have row count as a column. And if you enjoyed this video, you should know I do a live webinar every Tuesday and Thursday where you can come and learn something about Salesforce and ask me questions live. Hope to see you there.